So for the final thing, just for a little practice, I had shown you here that this final, this final uh, event handler, which populates the fields, uh, this is an anonymous function. It's sort of an orphan. It can only be used once in this particular instance. Um, these other ones have been functions that we invented that then we can use anytime we want, just by the shorthand, update class, delete class. This works, but it might be better as a, as a defined function to need it when necessary. So let's do that. Uh, let's back up to before the event handler section, line 137. We'll create a new function here. The hard part is, what should we call this function? What does it do? I would say it populates fields. Is that uh, is that a good enough name? Is it specific enough or generic enough? Um, because these clearly, this is how to add a class, how to show a class, how to delete a class. What's the purpose of all of this code? It's related to, it's related to updating a class. It makes it easier for the person to update the class. So I'm going to think about calling it update class populate. This populates my fields at the moment that I am updating the classes. I'm calling it like that just to, when I look at my code a month later or whatever, and I look at these file names, hopefully they help, or not file names, but these function names, hopefully that helps remind me what, what they do, what they're for. Because as we're intensely looking at our code nonstop for about three months, maybe it's floating around in our head pretty well, maybe not. But then when, it, when we come back a month later, three months later to do version two, we're probably going to forget what we did. So naming our things properly is always good. And so the big trick here is simply all of the, all of these lines, we're going to move them out of the anonymous function into our main function. But be careful here. Don't select that curly brace that opens the anonymous function. And don't select the closing curly braces and parentheses. Just lines 145 to 151. Just the variable definitions and then the field population. Select them and just drag them up into the function. And uh, again, just mind your parentheses and such. There is a parenthesis, I mean a curly brace right here, from the update class populate function. And then all of this is here. This is kind of now orphaned there as well. So I'll just delete this empty space on line 151 and backspace that so that it's just like that, as we've seen before. And what should go in here now? The name of the function we just invented. Instead of all of these lines of code, which were, which were only usable in this instant instance, now we've moved into a function, and we can use update class populate function anytime we want. So we'll type here, update class populate. Parenthesis. And so now we've got all of these functions that serve a, serve a particular task. They're defined, so we can use them when necessary. And now our code looks a little more consistent down there. That's not a requirement of things, of course, but if your code looks nice, we feel nice.
Is it, has it been seven minutes? One minute left? What's that? Oh, thank you. That's, uh, that's exactly what Scotty on Star Trek would do. So, uh, good. Let's save this. Uh, test it. It should still work the same. That's, of course, the ultimate check to see if it works. Show class. Click to edit. We're out of time. <laughs> now, let's see. Update class populate. Oh, I know why. We might not be able to do this. Uh, I think we, I, we can't. This now doesn't make sense. This has been abstracted. This has been removed from this, literally. So when we were clicking on TR and we were using this, it would make sense at that moment. This has been abstracted now. So I think what we need to do is um, We would be passing in. It's not that we're passing in the row. Is is that I think that we're passing in the. There's an event that happens when we click. So that's why I'm passing in that e right there, event. If you just move it down. Say that again? If you just move that block of text down below, under line 151, would it then work? I uh, will try it, but I don't think so, because in this case, it's not it's not so specific that it's going to go line by line. Uh -huh. Because here, if it, goes, if it goes line by line and we get to this point, it's going to jump back anyway. Right. So it did process this code up to that point and then jump back. So if it was after it, it would still process this code and then jump down. So honestly, on this one, I've got to look it up because we now no longer have this attached to the click. And there is going to be a way, and I brought the book to double check, but um, you can uh, either undo this back to the way it was or keep it like this and then I'll figure it out. We'll do the lab time. And um, this is why they say never make updates on a Friday at 4. <laughs> <laughs> but we live on the edge. <laughs>